I'm Sithrith. I'm Draculetta. I'm Mithelros. And you're listening to Radio Free Tyria, the Guild Wars 2 podcast for the casual crowd. This week, we don't have a ton of news, but it is International Talk Like a Pirate Day. I was going to do a thing. Thank you, Jack. I was going to... I was going to intro all piratey, but I felt silly, so I didn't. But thank you, Jack. Just just say arg and matey a lot, and you'll be all right. Arg That sounds more like a growl than a drum. Pirates. Et cetera. Pirates. (laughs) So, uh, sure. yeah, actually right now today, uh, for the live listeners, there is a Talk Like a Pirate Day sale going on in Guild Wars 2 right now. It's only 24 hours, so by the time that this is a recorded podcast, unfortunately, it will be too late. But there is a sale going on right now. Uh, Drac, I know in previous podcasts, you are the sales person, so you want to relive your glory days and, and read off the sales? And you know, I'm not sure how that ever happened, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we have the uh, Bizarre Quaggan Mini Pack for 500 gems. And I'll let you Quaggan lovers talk amongst yourselves about that. Go ahead. I'd also like to uh, point out it's not Bizarre, like B-I-Z-A-R-E. It's, although that it's, is applicable. It's Bizarre, like B-A-Z-A-A-R, so it's like a Marketplace Quaggan Mini Pack. Mm, what I recall, every rec- recall recrawl. it is also... Kind of bizarre, so I'll keep my quagging comments for myself. Mm-hmm. Also, <laughs> the <laughs> captain's airship pass. We have the permanent version for a thousand gems. You can get the two week version for seventy five gems. The permanent script scavenger furniture is four hundred and fifty five gems. The archblade heavy, medium, and light armor skins are on sale for six hundred forty gems. The Pirate Captain's Outfit, arg, 490 gems. I don't know why I keep doing that. And Magnus's eye patch is 280 gems. So you can look like a pirate while you're talking mm-hmm. like one of them. I Big bought the... the uh, pirate Captain's Outfit. Yeah. Since I bought that a while back. And you said that you missed out on the blue. sale? Mm, not really. Because no, there would have been a lot of time that I didn't have it. So I'd say Fair it's enough. worth it. I bought... Was too I bought the medium Aether Blade outfit or skin set. Today, it's pretty mm. good. It's uh, it's Aether Blady. It's got like gears and stuff on it. I also own the light armor set already, so uh, yeah, I'd say those are pretty good. I definitely recommend them. Not for your engineer, right? Yep, that's yep. Is that obvious? Well, kind of. Yeah. All right. Speaking of engineers, this week was Engineers Super Special Week. They finally released the information on the Engineers Elite Specialization. That will come out with Heart of Thorns, and it is called the Scrapper, which is kind of contrary to what people have been data mining. People kept thinking it was going to be called the Forge, and people were all interested in that. But it turns out that was either a intentional misdirect, or they changed it at the last minute or something, and it is called the Scrapper. And the Scrapper, uh, Elite Specialization, once you trade into it, it will allow you to wield a hammer as an engineer. Uh, which is a two-handed weapon, and it's a, obviously, melee-oriented class. And you also, the utility skills that you'll get access to once you trade into the Scrapper Elite Specialization, you'll get gyros, which are kind of these little drones that hover around, and you can, kind of, they, they do different things. There's a healing one, obviously, there's one that will cure conditions on people, um, there's one that will just run into enemies and explode. Fun stuff like that. They did some gameplay on points of interest number 34 for it. It does look pretty interesting. Um, Unfortunately, none of us really play Engineer. Like I said, though, in the pre-show, I am on my Engineer right now. Um, It's level 35, and I used a total makeover kit on it in anticipation of the Scrapper. But I, I don't know. I've had a hard time getting into Engineer, but I'm hoping the Elite Specialization will maybe change that because it seems pretty interesting. I was, I mean, obviously, like I said, I'm not... 
I've done some PvP with Engineer, but I'm not fully, you know, I don't have a full command of the class. But yeah, I'm just hoping that this makes Engineers more fun to play against, because as is, they sort of just drop down turrets and then run away. Mm. Or hit you with ranged weapons like the flamethrower, in which case, yeah, you just don't get near them and they heal a lot, so it's kind of annoying. Mm. Hopefully this kind of makes them more scrappy. <laughs> that just sort of jump in and do damage, kind of warrior ish. Right. Instead of just running away a lot, which I find irritating. Yeah, it certainly seems like they'll be a little bit tankier with this um setup. With the hammer and the gyros. And the, some of the gyros uh AI is really interesting. The um, condition cleansing gyro especially is really interesting because you like I assumed when they said oh the, the they're gonna have these little flying drones follow you everywhere I thought you'd just kind of summon them and they'd follow you around like ranger pets do but each one of them has very distinct AI behavior so the one that explodes like you some like you have to target an enemy first and then you summon it and it just makes a beeline towards the enemy and tries to blow up on the enemy. Um, there's another one where you summon it in a location, it's like a ground-targeted targeted skill, and then it just kind of sits there and just, like, whirls around throwing out projectiles. Then the condition cleansing one, you summon it, and it will zip around between all of your allies that have conditions. Like, it'll sense, like, which allies, including yourself, obviously, have condi- conditions on them, go up to them, cure their conditions, move on to another ally, cure their conditions. So that's really cool, actually. It's a lot, you know, more intelligent, I guess, than what I assumed the drones would be like. Also, when I was reading the first article um, on MMORPG.com revealing the scrapper, and they said, oh, they're going to have these gyros because of how it's spelled. I was totally, I totally first read it as heroes, like the, the, the Greek kind of. So I'm not season. the only one that was <laughs> no. eating a sandwich? No, yeah, I, <laughs> I was reading along, and, oh, blah, blah, engineers will have heroes, and I was like, wait, what? No, gyros, right, okay, that heroes, that doesn't make any sense. Why would they have just floating meat following them? That's silly. But yeah, Because that's... why wouldn't you? Well, yeah, well, exactly, why wouldn't you have just meat following you everywhere? So that that's kind of the scrapper, like I said, none of us really play it a whole lot, so... Yeah, our experiences with this will mm. largely be fighting against in PvP. Right. And of course, and once the, the next thing... beta's up, I'll give it a try. Yeah. And... Talk about it. Thing with these then. kind of pets or any kind of, I guess, jars really pretty much are pets is mm-hmm. that you kind of have to balance their overall power versus how hard they are to kill. Right. Because you look at, say, hunter or ranger pets, rather, their pets are pretty darn hard to kill, to be honest. Like, they have a lot of health, mm-hmm. but they don't do that much, so they generally aren't too big of a problem if you leave them alive, which is right. what most people do. And, you know, I guess there's a possibility that these might be too potent to leave alive. And yet, I think uh, Delvi did a sort of roundup from the point of address step, so um, Mm -hmm. mentioning that they have a significant amount of health. It's possible that they might just be, you know, too potent to leave alive, but they're too sort of bulky to kill within a reasonable amount of time. Right. Well, and it also, I guess, it depends on how cool you want to kill them depending on which type of drone it is. Like, some you might not really care. Like, the condition cleansing one probably is not super high priority to kill unless you're, you've are you got a condition build, in which case, yeah, you probably do want to kill that right away. Um, but also, you know, most classes seem to get a significant amount of tweaking after the first beta weekend that they have, so mm-hmm. we'll see yeah. how that works out. Yep. But another interesting thing about the Scrapper that um, people have been talking about is the lore around the name... Uh, basically, a scrapper was already kind of established as a a name for a group in char lore, and basically, scrappers could be individual chars or usually entire warbands. Um, scrapper warbands were kind of put on. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not criminal. I mean, they they were usually charged with being insubordinate or not not following orders generally, or being problematic, I suppose. And so they they are charged with kind of doing grunt labor, picking up scrap metal and stuff. And I guess the idea behind naming the class the Scrapper is obviously it's it's a melee class, so it's kind of a scrapper fighter kind of thing. And also because I suppose I guess the kind of I suppose an underclass of these char engineers who are you know sent to do scrapper duty have kind of taken it on as their own 
kind of term of endearment. They've kind of owned the title, as it were. Some people think this is a bad lore justification, but, I mean, I think it's interesting. Char society I mean, seems to evolve quite rapidly, so I'm not super surprised about it. I mean, it's not unheard of uh, things that are supposed to be, like, a derogatory term. People end up, like, taking them on as a badge of honor. It's not unheard of that people do that. In oh, no, world. people do that all Various fictions, so. Right, people do it all the time, so it's not unreasonable. Perfectly feasible. Yeah. So that's interesting, and, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, one interesting thing, also from the Points of Interest stream that revealed the Scrapper, was apparently that is the last Points of Interest uh, live stream that they're going to be doing, because I we don't know the details about it yet, but TwitchCon is coming up soon, and ArenaNet is going to be at TwitchCon. Um, they will be doing a stream there and showing off the Druid spe- Elite Specialization there, uh, so that's next weekend or next week sometime i think on the 25th they said of september and something that they teased that they'll also be announcing and releasing maybe releasing but at least announcing at twitchcon is something called arena net television they kind of teased the uh, logo for it and we don't really know a whole lot about what the heck that is we're assuming that uh points of interest or you know the content that they would usually do on Points of Interest and their PvP version of Points of Interest, Ready Up, will continue on in some form in a different name on this arena at television, whatever it is. I don't know. What do you guys think this is going to be? Do you think it's going to be, like, their own Twitch, or do you think it's going to be just a new channel? I don't know what to think about this. Mm, I think it's possible that it's just more of a streamlining of their content. Mm-hmm. So, like you mentioned, they have a, at the moment a separate sort of PV and PV kind of thing that they want to sort of merge it into a more like easier to find and consume just source of information, I mm-hmm. suppose. Right. I think that's more likely than I guess any kind of huge endeavor they might be looking for. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's probably the the most likely thing. It seems kind of strange that they're you know, making a big deal about it. I don't know. Seems kind of weird. Uh, so, let's see. Anything else? Oh, yeah, we did also get a update this week. On the 15th, we got a new patch. And, let's see. We, we I mean, there are some interesting changes. One interesting thing that I thought, if you press Alt down on your keyboard, you can see your character's name and title above their head. I did not know that. No, you do. I don't think it's actually in the patch notes, but it is something... That they added with this update. And why was this ever needed? Sometimes you like to see what your name looks like. I guess. I do. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Sometimes, like, I just, I just like to see what it looks like, like, combined with the guild tag well, and completion. the. Oh yeah, I didn't I look, just think about that, but yeah. Can't think of a time when I would ever want to see my name, but okay. Mm. I guess some people just like to see what the titles look like on their names. Yeah, I mm-hmm. like to see what the title looks well, like I guess that combined makes sense, with the so, name. Yeah. yeah, and then if you have Not like a, a fitting, a fitting guild tag, also, you know. I'd still like for them to make the. I think it's the control that shows up the names on all collectible items in the your radius. Mm-hmm. I think that's something UV's using this always a lot. Right. I still wish they would make that toggle yeah, because it's be really nice. irritating. You have to keep holding that down. Yeah. I don't know why it's like that, because I don't know of any other game that does it that way. Yeah, I feel like most games it is a toggle. DJ Pimp Daddy in the chat says uh, we should just blame uh, wanting to see your uh, character name on the selfie generation. Then I guess you'll have to include me in that, because like I said, I like being able to look at my name. (laughs) (laughs) Deal with it. Um... So, another thing that has people kind of up in arms about this update, though, is that previously, the way the personal story would work is for level 10, you'd get, you know, you'd get to level 10, you could start the personal story, and at the end of that first personal story chapter from level 10, you would get a black lion chest key. People would create character, like, new characters, run them to level 10, do the personal story, get the chest key, delete it, you know, repeat, and they'd farm black lion chest keys this way. But however, now in this update, they've changed it so that you can only get that key uh, once per week on your account. So they've effectively this, stopped the chest key farming. This is why we can't have nice things. Yeah, basically. So a lot of people are very upset about this. I don't really have an opinion on it. 
Like, I can see why people would want to farm the chest keys, because it is kind of obnoxious to get the keys. Um, they did supposedly up the uh, drop rate of the Black Lion chest keys throughout the world, but we don't know how much and if it would even out at all. Um, yeah, I mean, companies pretty much never sort of give the exact statistics on these sort of right. like rare loot drops. Like, before we know, they could have done it to like 0.1% to 02 and that's a huge buff. Like, <laughs> Yeah. That's possi- probably part of the problem too, is that it's like, did they really give the increase any sort of significance or is it just like a token gesture? Right. Well, and like, I don't know, I can see why ArenaNet would not want people to be just creating, key- like, creating characters, farming this one piece of story, deleting it and repeating it. Like, I can see why they wouldn't want to encourage that. I can also see why people would want to do it. So, I don't know, I just, but, eh. Then again, I mean, come on. Any, I, and it's not just arena net. I will throw all video game developers into the statement I'm about to make. Okay. You have to know people are going to find a way to quote unquote exploit your game. If there is a loophole that people can find, they're gonna find it. Yeah. So why don't you not, uh, you know, make your change before you even release the game? Don't put that in the game. <laughs> Well, it's like you know people are going to do it. You know people are going to find it, and you know people are going to do it. It's video game players are notorious for finding the littlest loopholes in anything, latching onto them. The and quickest go. path. Yeah. yeah, video game players are like water. They will find the path of least resistance, the lowest path of least resistance. Exactly. So, wh- and then it just cracks me up that all. It, and like I said, it's not just a, it, a, a arena net. It's all game companies. And then they get all shocked. It's like, well, I can't believe people are farming those keys. Right. Well, what did you with this? What's going to happen? I don't know. I'm actually surprised they but, did it at this point, because as far as I know, those keys have been there for a long time. Well, yeah, it kind well, of seems weird to do something about it now, too. Well, okay, here's the thing, the other thing. Apparently, back well, back before I started playing, um, and obviously Athelros as well, the personal story worked, like, you could start doing the personal story as soon as you created your character. So people would farm keys that way because then you could they could do the first chapter right away. And so then they changed it. Oh, well, you can't do the personal story until you're at level 10. And then people still kept farming it. So now they're like, oh, well, okay, we'll make it so that you can only get it once per week. I'll be interested to see if people continue to farm keys this way or if well, of course they will. ArenaNet will have to try and change things again. I'm not sh- Actually, I'm not quite sure what they mean. Um mean for this limited one per week? Does mean if you have a character that like you've already got a level one, then you make another one, will you just not get a key? Or will you not be able to do anything with it? You'll not be able right. to get a key for a week, I think. You only get one key per account per week. Right. Then I sure hope they give warning when you do that, because otherwise people are going to be mad that they shows they get well, a reward the and they don't end up getting it. It kind of also punishes people who just, like me, are altaholics who just, just like... like yeah. yeah, I just... I have 13 characters. I I mean, I'm personally, I'm in a bit of a slump right now of making and playing characters, but um, other people are totally altaholics like me and would definitely get a whole bunch of characters to level 10. What if you're trying the game out for the first time and you want to get a whole bunch of characters to, like, level 15, level 20 before you decide which uh, class or whatever to focus on? If you do that in a week's time, you're going to miss out on keys, which is unfortunate. I mean, honestly, getting keys this way doesn't seem to be that huge of an abuse, at least from my limited perspective. Right. There may be some larger effect to the economy that I'm not aware of, but well, it doesn't seem to be that big a deal. Worth... Well, that's the other thing. It's like when you think about what you get from the Black Lion chest, most of the time it's just account bound buffs. And stuff most of the yeah, time. Nothing. Really. Sure, sometimes you can get dies. Sure, sometimes you can get minis. You can get uh, black line chest scrap thingies. But I mean, most of the time you get kind of crap from chests, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, personally, I don't. I don't think this is really that big a deal to like make a fuss about on either end. Really, like I don't think it's a big deal to complain about it happening. But I also don't think it's a big deal that they did this in the first place. Right. Like, I don't think they really needed to. I don't think it was a huge pressing issue. Right. Probably other things that would, would take worth more of their time. In the chat, Carnifex is asking if anybody knows when the key reset is at. I assume it's different based on whenever you get your first key or whatever. Like, it'll 
if you get a key, then there'll be some kind of internal timer, and then a week later you'll be able to get another one, I assume. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what they did. I don't know if they'll reverse it or anything. But, yeah, that's I think that's about it for, like, all the super game news stuff. Uh, something interesting happened this week, though, in game. Over at Reddit, somebody posted that they came back to the game... Uh, because it's free to play now, and they they tried picking up the game a couple years ago when there was a free trial going on, and they went into the Super Adventure Box. The Super Adventure Box is something of much uh, myth and legend in the Guild Wars 2 community. I never played it. Thalros never played it. Drek, I don't think you ever played the Super Adventure Box, did you? No, I started right after it ended. Okay. So originally the so Super Adventure Box was this April Fool's Day kind of thing. That ArenaNet did, it was basically this portal that you could go through in Rodasum, and it would take you to this kind of retro gaming pixelated Guild Wars 2 kind of uh, platformer thing. There was all sorts of rewards, like you could get different skins and minis, and people really, really loved it. And they turned it on once more after that later, and... um I think there's also, like, a second one, like Super Adventure Box 2 or something. Like I said, it was this was before I started playing, so I'm not entirely sure what the deal is. But people, like, veterans who played it, talk about it all the time and how much they love it. There was a big, like, riot during April Fool's this year. Um, like, and by riot, I mean people went and stood at the portal entrance for Super Adventure Box and were, like, demanding people that arena that turn it back on. Yeah. It was, was kind of weird. Time. So this one guy, he comes back, he he played a trial at one point a couple of years ago, he comes back, and he had a character still, um, but the character was logged into the Super Adventure Box. He tried to log in on it, and he was in the Super Adventure Box, but he couldn't get out, because there's new free account um, level restrictions of different areas, and he couldn't seem to get out of the Super Adventure Box, so he was stuck in the Super Adventure Box. He took a lot of screenshots, um, I guess, you know, to prove that he was in the Super Adventure Box. And, uh, yeah, people were going nuts on Reddit about it, because, you know, everybody wants to experience the Super Adventure Box again. People love it. And here he is, stuck with no way to get out. So it's kind of funny. Um, but, yeah, it's... It, yeah, he tried to use some teleport to a friend things to get some people in there as well. Uh, he did say that it was incredibly bugged out. There was a lot of dialogue that was just completely missing. Um, and some mobs that were just totally not working and all sorts of stuff. So it is, the Super bu- Adventure Box as it was before it does not work, as ArenaNet's been saying. But it is still kind of there, I guess. So that was kind of cool. People obviously yeah, are very it's, jealous. <laughs> it's kind of amazing that... When the quote unquote event ended, anybody in it didn't get automatically zoned out of there. I mean, it's yeah, pretty amazing to me that I mean, how many other characters are still in there? Well, that's the thing. Like, this is such such an edge case. Like, he was a free trial account, so he was just kind of in there. So I, he's still a free account. Like, a regular player would probably be able to just teleport out, like you know, waypoint out or exit normally or whatever. But because he's still a free account, because he was playing during a free trial weekend, like, it's so, you know, free accounts shouldn't be able to get in there because free accounts shouldn't exist until recently, except for this one tiny little edge case. So it's really interesting that that happened. They probably didn't expect, you know, free accounts to be stuck in the Super Adventure Box ever. Hmm. And apparently there were people trying to use the um, teleport to friend item consumables to try and get in there as well from him. Mm-hmm. Apparently they would get kicked out the second they went there, though. Which uh, is interesting. Right. So, yeah. Uh, that happened. <laughs> uh, did you guys do anything this week in-game? It's kind of been a slow week. Yeah, sort of just in the lull leading up to the next sort of more beta weekend stuff, and then obviously the expansion coming up pretty soon now. Right. Yeah, we've got a month to go, so I know personally I'm kind of not playing quite as much. I don't want to burn myself out into anticipation of Heart of Thorns. Um, kind of just waiting around. I mean, I've been doing a lot of silver waste farming because, you know, gold. It's always good. Um, I did have an interesting experience, though, in the silver wastes. 
I met another Silvari in the Silver Wastes, uh, who had a, like, nearly the same exact color scheme as my Necromancer, with the pink and purple and the branch hair with the flowers in it. And we got to talking, and then, um, one of their friends showed up, and one of their friends happened to be a listener on the show, uh, or a listener to the show, Spider Kiss, who I, uh, know on Tumblr, so that was pretty cool. And yeah, so that was, that was kind of a serendipitous, experience in the silver wastes and yeah i like i said earlier i i did total makeover kit my engineer actually his name i also used a name change thing because his name used to be simonin bun because reasons uh but there's his, no reason behind it. because that. reasons because it was funny but his name is now craig gear smoke which is a bit more of a fitting char name and not ridiculous but yeah so so that's so yeah, Craig Gear Smoke, the Demolisher. So that's my that's my engineer. He's pretty cool looking, I think. And uh, yeah, he's he's ready to be a scrapper, possibly. Also, just because I think he looked kind of silly before. But um, yeah, I think that's about it. I, that's all I did this week. Oh wait, no, Ethelros. We also kind of did some exploration in Claw Island. Yeah. Um, I was on my level sixty-ish uh, Char Guardian mm-hmm. doing the obviously Claw Island stuff, and I hadn't ever actually, had, of all the times I've been there, actually looked around because you sort of just get caught up in the actual fighting and stuff. So we ended up sort of just ditching the fight that was going on since we've both done that instance a lot mm-hmm. and just sort of looked around. There's actually a surprising amount of detail in those areas. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of random ships kind of shipwrecked up on these rocks and islands and stuff, and you can mostly jump up on most of them. I think. We also got to the base of another lighthouse. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the ships and stuff, they're really detailed. And another thing that was I was surprised about is all the water in, or, you know, it, the underwater bits of Claw Island are all very detailed as well. Yeah, you can kind of, like, when we were up on a lot of the higher, um, well, just the, the taller parts, you can kind of see the boundaries of where their sort of details stopped, and you could it pretty much matched the map of the giant square that sort of surrounded the Claw Island of you know, the boundaries. Mm-hmm. Still pretty impressive to see how far I went, though. Yeah, I, you like, know, usually with the player store or personal story stuff, you get this really kind of closed-in little red box before it tells you, oh, you know, if you don't move back to where you're supposed to be, we're gonna, you know, move you back forcibly. But Claw Island's <laughs> area is quite large. Yeah, I mean, like, I would, it wouldn't even say half of that you would usually see during the actual instance because you spend almost all your time inside the keep Mm -hmm. and then like a little bit on the beach. But then even when we were on the beach, like it was just a short while away, theoretically, to that one island that we were on. And yet I never even glanced there because you just get too busy fighting, which is what I was doing. Really surprising, but nice to see. Yeah, I I was definitely pleased to see all the detail in the, you know, that little area that otherwise we'd never look at. Still have to stress command the town is an idiot. Again. Yeah, that char guy in charge of the line guards dumb. He makes some bad, uh, bad life decisions. And yeah, well, life ends up ending for him. Like I said, as it should. bad, bad life decisions. Spoiler, gee, uh, uh, he deserved it. I mean, I feel like that's not super spoiler. We didn't say like what happens specifically. He's just such an idiot. Like I know. I've sort of complained about this before, but I'm going to say it again. I know they were going for the sort of stubborn commander who doesn't know when to ask for help kind of thing, but I feel like they drag out, like, two or three conversations too many. Like, I'm, I'm going to say the spoilers now, so, yeah, for the record. But, like, first you warn him that there's danger coming, and he doesn't want to do it. Okay, you should, but okay. And, and then, then the undead come up. see things attacking, and he's still like, nope. And then I think they send in the ship, and he's still like, nope. And then they <laughs> actually smash the walls in, and there's a giant dragon. And then he's dragon. like, oh, I guess we should turn on these lighthouse light things. I guess that's a thing we should do now. <laughs> <sighs> and then he dies. Right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, you kind of called out a little late. And it ends up costing like a ton of people their lives, including uh, other people. So, <laughs> Including <it's>... other people. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of his fault, a lot of that stuff. Yep. Stubbornness. That's true. So this week we got another Tumblr message, again from Itsy Bats, who replied to episode 2 on Tumblr. 
Itsy Bet said, great podcast, guys. I was a little lost as I didn't play the beta and still yet to fully understand specializations, but I still enjoyed it. So thanks for keeping listening, Itsy Bets. We really appreciate it. And uh, just a little explanation on specializations, elite specializations. Uh, specializations are basically just the new word that ArenaNet uh, uses for trait lines. Um, they used to obviously just be called trait lines, but now with the way they've reworked traits, they're called specializations. Elite specializations are new trait lines that classes will be able to use in Heart of Thorns um, once you hit level 80. And it's basically a new trait line that gives you access to a different weapon that your class previously wouldn't be able to use, like the elite specialization like we talked about for Engineer allows you access to the hammer, and it gives you new skills, obviously, and then also some new utility skills, and it basically kind of changes up the way the profession plays compared to how it normally yeah, it's, does. It's really odd, actually, in comparison, because I don't really know of other MMOs that kind of do this in that they have a sort of upgrade, quote-unquote, but it's not necessarily an upgrade. It's like a side grade. Certain, it, changes, yeah, it changes parts of your abilities to be something else, but they're not necessarily better. It's just sort of different, aside from getting you know, an access to a new weapon. Right. Well, it's kind of it's like really exactly odd. the way the name sounds. It's a specialization. It's not doing something better, but it's just specializing in a very specific thing. Yeah, like the Reaper, for example. They go from being sort of, a, not say necessarily long range, but sort of mid range of just AoEing everything, mm-hmm. to just being a big hulking bruiser, swinging your scythe around really slowly. Right, exactly. And and like with warriors, like there's warriors right now who use the hammer and the longbow and, you know, they do a lot of CC. But for example, my warrior is very burn burning and like condition damage focused. And so the Berserker Elite specialization is a really good specialization for me because it feed it it you know, it's specializing into that thing that I'm already doing a lot, so it works out. So yeah. Elite specializations are kind of supposed to be a side grade that just gives you a different way to play the classes that we already have. So it's kind of cool. And I think that's kind of it for today. Because, yeah, like we said, we didn't have tons and tons of news. Just the scrapper thing and the pirate thing and RRR, etc. Um, and the key farm thing, of course. So I think that's about it. I do also just want to say I noticed in the chat, um, this has never happened to me before, but apparently, hold on. Uh, Talking Skrit, which I know is a another podcast, is hosting us. I don't know how that's a thing, but I will say thank you for that, uh, because we now have uh, over 20 people watching our stream right now, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we, we appreciate that. I'll have to figure out what that means. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for listening, and we hope that you kind of stick around and keep listening to our show. If you want more Radio Freeteria, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and over at RadioFreeteria.net, you'll find our RSS feed. Don't miss out on our live streams. Every Saturday at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we record Radio Freeteria live at twitch.tv slash Radio Freeteria. We also stream Guild Wars 2 gameplay on and off throughout the week. If you want more news from us, you can find Radio Freeteria on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and Tumblr. And of course, for more information about us and our show, you can always check out RadioFreeTeria.net. <laughs>